Yeah, we're the ghost of a saber-toothed tiger. Or the or, ghost. Or the ghost. G-O-A-S-T-T. Which is an acronym for the ghost of a saber-toothed tiger. <laughs> Yeah, we're and the Ghost of the Saber Tooth Tiger, and that's us. She and I started the band a few years back after we started dating, and it was um, it was an attempt to guarantee spending a little more time together because we were both very busy otherwise. We thought if we had a band, we might see each other sometimes, which has turned out to be true. Uh, I think we wrote a song called The World Was Made For Men, and which is on our first album, The Acoustic Sessions. Now legendary <laughs> folk. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Death metal, kind of folk black metal album. And we wrote that song and we liked it very much, and so we decided to write some more, and then some more after that. And, uh, and then took a brief hiatus and then wrote some more after that. And we had a reunion So tour. on and so forth. Well, Midnight Sun is the electric formation of our band and then we've had we've started acoustically but this has always been on the back burner you know the side the acoustic thing was more of a side project and uh, we finally finished the electric one but that's what we started with actually I think we started writing songs like this the electrified songs very soon after the world was made for men which was our acoustic period but we didn't release the electric music because we thought we'd save money and go on tour as a traveling circus. Was him playing first. the drums and the guitar and singing at the same time? Yeah, we just did, a, we did a kind of stripped down thing where we were just in a car. In fact, one of our tours, it was just she and I in a car and, uh, and, and two guitarists and some flutes and a, what, a glockenspiel. <laughs> and we toured just like that. And After that, I swore I would never play an accordion again and then we had to go fully electric. I was at the point where I just wanted to set my accordion on fire at the end of her show. I made her promise she like would never go near with. an accordion again. I actually have a restraining order for, for her on <laughs> Against my accordion. Um, we have like a we collect instruments as well as you know, as well as being just in a regular rock band. We also collect a lot of weird instruments. I've been collecting analog synthesizers for many years and I have a bunch of weird stuff like old moves and arps and stuff and I have an old Chamberlain which is a very strange kind of like uh, early sampler and she has a bunch of instruments too like an My old My stuff calliope. is like analog analog, it's like hand cranks and... She has a calliope from like 1890 and, a, and glass harmonica which is essentially a bunch of rotating glass bowls and you use water to make them sing and but we have a bunch of weird, cool-sounding instruments, and she also Harps got, chords, got me an orchestral marimba for Christmas one year, which is really sweet. So we have a bunch of cool stuff, and we, we tend to try to use all of it on every song, which is a <laughs> bad idea, but we do. <laughs> we tend to err on the side of mysterious and darker sounds anyway. We always like the spooky notes or the spooky sounds or the minor chords or the, those, the odd notes that are sort of a little unsettling, but we find to be beautiful in their own way. I don't know, with the singing, we don't really think of ourselves as singers. Yeah, I think we both it's always the last thing we do on the record, the vocals. As opposed to the first. <laughs> well, <laughs> Who no. does that first, like, the vocal <laughs> so, first and then no. overdoes the drums. No, but it's literally the very last thing. We'll wait till the very last second, and then we're like, oh, fine, go in there, and, you know, we'll record a vocal really fast. That's the face she makes. No, but we don't yeah. consider ourselves singers so much. I think we would both consider ourselves songwriters, musicians, maybe lyricists, you know. Triangle. But we Virtual don't consider songs. ourselves singers so much. I mean, we do sing and we know that that's our job, but we don't really, uh, you know, we don't spend a lot of time singing in the shower, for instance. Yeah. A, a, a label expert would have told us it was the absolute worst song to make a video for because it's the furthest from a single. Well, we actually didn't know it was going to be that song when we made that film. We were just wanting to make a film, and we thought one of our songs is going to fit, or one or two, but eventually we just decided to listen to Moth to a Flame with that video playing, and it just happened to sync up quite well. I mean, obviously we had to edit it to make it fit exactly, but um, we didn't actually make that video with that song intended for that visual specifically. but. Um, it wound up to work really well, and the reason we put that out was because we felt like it was a, a good introduction to this universe of our songs. But it wasn't like the we thought this was a pop song. single or something. 
It's because when we were recording it, the whole lap still track is one take live all the way through. And I remember having to like cut and paste drums to keep going so he'd have more to play to because he was, it was like one of those things, you know when a musician's in the zone and there was just like a magic with this lap still take that he was Basically doing. I had never played the instrument before so I was very excited. Nels Klein had just given it to me and mm -hmm. I was playing those pink electric and I felt like too. I was like transcending some kind of physical realm and the mescaline could, was kicking yeah, in. Yeah, she could tell that I was really in so the I didn't zone. Want so him to she stop. just kept copying the song I over and over. I kept pasting as so it was recording more and more drums so we so, could keep playing yeah. to it. So and, somewhere there's like a five so hour long. version of that song. That's why it's so long. <laughs> yeah, with Moth to a Flame we, we it was very um, homemade and uh, it was kind of dangerous, actually. There was a lightning storm while we were shooting all this stuff with those girls out in the forest with the fire and everything. And it got kind of crazy. And in fact, this tree fell. And <laughs> one of the girls got hit on the head, and she kind of went unconscious for a second. Yeah, a tree fell on her. It, it was, was pretty nuts. wild. It was pretty intense. And I was doing all the styling and makeup myself. Like, it was very, very crude. And, and difficult, but it we learned a lot. Yeah, it was wild. So for for our most recent one, Animals, we decided, okay, we wanted to be a little more professional this time, but we were still very involved in the concept and the aesthetic and said, you know, like, we wanted to be really Kenneth Angry and occultish. ourselves because we love the 60s so much but you know we also have a sense of humor about it and what's kind of silly about the 60s and we wanted that to come through. When we were sequencing the album we really think of it in terms of side A and side B of a record. I mean I definitely come from that generation where I was buying records and so I still think of albums as you know the first cut on side A what's going to be the last cut on side B you know. And I think that's a good format. It's almost like when you study playwriting or screenwriting, they usually tell you you can either write something in one or two or three acts. Like, there's rarely a four act play that's successful because it's just too many segments. And having two sides or four sides to an album, I mean, usually it's a, a single or double disc record. You know, it's a really good way to sort of have a narrative for your album. I think. We like toy keyboards a lot. I tend to, I mean, I have a huge stack of just weird toy keyboards that have light up, you know, keys or weird dinosaurs attached to them. And they always have a really strange sound. Well, you like circuit bent sound. Toys, right? Some of them are circuit bent, which is just when they've been modified. But in general, I like children's toys. I think they make really Nothing strange creepy about sounds. that at all. I think headphones is the best because we, we do a lot of stereo panning and we believe a lot in that kind of mixing. That's, you know, when stereo first, first happens. We're the first to ever use stereo panning. Well, no, because no one really does that anymore because usually people are mixing for, for I guess, cars and like public places where there's speakers everywhere. I love when you're in a restaurant and you just hear the drums like in one part of the restaurant and you walk to the other side and you just hear the backup vocals. She does love that. She gets really excited. She <laughs> runs in little circles actually and her tail starts to wag. <laughs> yeah, I start drooling. No, but you know, when they first invented stereo actually in the 60s, um, they didn't really think a lot about those mixes. So, you know, they would mix the song and in mono and then usually everyone would go home and the engineer would just do a random stereo mix because it was sort of a novelty, like now in stereo. Like smell So often they something. would have all the band on one side and all the vocals on the other side and it's a very strange sound. But actually I've become very attached to that kind of mixing because I associate it with my favorite records and, and, and that period when stereo was still a novelty. So we do a lot of hard panning because I think we are, are fans of that kind of period. I mean, if you listen to Axis Boulders Love the Hendrix record, yeah, I was just there's so much that. weird panning where like the drive vocal will be on one side, but the well, delay the will be on will the other side. Well, the guitar will actually be panning around the whole time. Yeah, exactly. So I think the headphones is the only way you can really experience the stereo vibes. So I would recommend that. I mean, other than that, we don't really care. And hopefully not one of those like really ugly, cheesy like set of white headphones with like red writing on them. Not those. <laughs> yeah. The record actually won't play on it those. Won't, yeah, so it actually self will self-destruct <laughs> if, if you use those. Hi, 
We are the ghost. Look for us on Last FM.